Daniel chapter 9, verse 24. Now last night we did verses 1 to 23. You can get that video. 9.24. 70 weeks, we talked about that last night, are determined upon thy people, Israel. No church. Upon thy holy city, Jerusalem. To finish the transgression, to make an end of sins, to make reconciliation for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. That what we have here is we have some who teach this verse wrong. First of all, they'll teach. This is the church age. Man, we are so far from the book of Acts. The Messiah hadn't even been born yet. Thy people talking to Daniel, who's a Jew. Thy holy city talking to a Jew. A Hebrew. We got six points here. To finish the transgression, to make an end of sin, to make re reconciliation for the iniquity, for bringing in the everlasting righteousness, to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. Now the amillennialists, or the postmillennialists, we'll look at them in a minute, that when they finish the transgression, that Christ finished the transgression on Calvary or at Calvary. Sounds like it. That Christ made an end to the sins when he died on the cross. The reconciliation of his death reconciled us back to God. Fulfilling the Old Testament prophecies entirely did Christ. That's sealing up the vision and prophecy. Well, 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 let's look at what they do. Anoint the most holy was Jesus at his baptism. So the very first point we got is to finish the transgression. Now, that, that, that was not done at Calvary. That wasn't done. To finish... We'll get the next one. To make an end of sins. We'll combine number one and number two. To show you how stupid some people are. I can say stupid because the CEV says stupid. Alright, so we got number two is to make an end of sin. So let me ask you. Have you stopped sinning? I'm going to tell you today I, I had a very serious sin in my life. I went way too far. I had to confess it. I had to apologize for it. Friend, we are in the Laodicean church age today. Do you know what our Laodicean church is? It makes God sick. The church age we are in lies. Oh, I'm rich. We're wonderful, great. And guys, I know you're wretched, miserable, poor, and rotten. The payment was made when Jesus died, but it did not end sin. I'm trying to think of his name. Um, the apostle that was with Paul went back to Thessalonica, loving the world. To finish the transgression to make an end of sin. You know, you pick up the newspaper. This guy took a gun and, and killed all these people. This guy took a knife and killed all these people. And wait, I thought. So, currently, today, there are Christians, good Christians, who have sinned. That, that doesn't reconcile number one and number two. To make a reconciliation for iniquity. 
Christ did, death did make recognition for iniquity. Yeah, but there is a reckoning yet still to come. To bring in the everlasting righteousness. Again, in this church age today, right now, present. Revelation chapter 3, we are a church that makes God puke. We got tons of Bibles out there that are of Satan. We got men that get in a pulpit and they're not preaching righteousness, they're preaching deception. We got women in the pulpit where the Bible says you're not even supposed to be there. To seal up the vision and the prophecy. We are still in the listen. There are people, oh, the signs of the time. Matthew 24 is for the tribulation period. There's more signs and prophecies coming if you ever read the book of Revelation. Christ did not fulfill all the prophecy because the first advent is not the second advent. There is prophecies about the first advent. They were all sealed. They were all finished. 33 A.D., thereabouts, the second advent. Has Jesus Christ come back on a horse? No. Has Jesus Christ conquered those nations that are against him and God and the Jews? No. To anoint the most holy. Yes. Jesus Christ was anointed at his baptism by the Holy Spirit. But he's got an anointing coming where he's going to be king of kings and lord of lords. I sat under a preacher, initials TJ, who preached the Old Testament men and women were Christians. Right out of the pulpit. If that was the case, men and women of the Old Testament church Verses 1 through 6 is a heresy. Because if they were Christians and they weren't, what do you do with David who took a look at a woman and said, Ooh, all right, call her and come into me. What do you do for his son? Uh, uh, tell that woman I want her to marry her. Tell that woman I want to marry her. I want to marry you. Will you marry me? And you do it a thousand times. What do you do with that? What do you do when Christ is anointed the most holy and he wasn't baptized to? He was 30. Now, an on amillionist or ism, amillionist, there is no I've said it once, I can't say it twice. Millennial kingdom, no reign of Jesus Christ. Ah, means no. Atheist, no God. Jesus Christ is not coming back to the ah, millennials. We just keep on going and keep on going until uh, the batteries die or something. The post millennials. Man makes it better. Everything gets great. We, we we get the Democrats. We get the great government. We get everything fine. We got the, 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 the air is clean. The whales are saved. Everybody has a job. And, and those have, have the riches. And then Jesus Christ comes and pats us on the back and says, good job. That is the, 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 the broad thinking of the Catholic Church. That is the thinking of the Southern Baptist Church or Convention. That is the thinking of your African American churches. The African American churches are political. They get on board with those. I have a dream. I'm going to take a position on the bus and break the law. 
Then we're going to go with Reverend Jackson, which we're going to change the government. We're going to change their way. We're going to give civil rights. And when, when the black is coming, I must have seen a coming up. No, you didn't. You liar. How dare you sing that, that hymn in a Baptist church? I've been in Baptist churches. They play that. I mean, this woman is a liar. <laughs> she doesn't know. Her savior was the Yankees from North. <laughs> That's what the saviors were. And you look at the black people. They went all up north. They went to Chicago. Now they live in ghettos and they have no money. And they're high on crack. That's a freedom. They filled the prisons. Don't tell me. I was five, six years in the prison ministry. You just got to get in that prison, hear that door clunk, and you look around. Color will tell you. pre millennials that's me. It gets worse, and it will get worse, and it will get worse, and then Jesus returns and makes it better. That's of a Bible-believing Christian. Everything's going to get worse. The church is going to get worse. We're not going to have no grand, great revivals. When Paul wrote to Timmy, men will be lovers of themselves and and, and covenant break. That's the signs of the end of the church age. The church is not the answer. The Jewish people are not the answer. The Republican Party is not the answer. Global health care is not the answer. Climate control is not the answer. Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, that's the answer. And where you sit and who you listen to, you better be well advised in the Bible. Because there are religions out there, there are pulpits out there teaching a heresy that all will get great. All will be better. And they'll come up to you in church, you know. I, I had a guy the other day, oh, I'm, I'm going to kill all the Democrats. I'm, I'm going to kill them all. Why? They'll raise up more Democrats and you'll go to jail. They're ruining our country. No, sin is ruining our country. The legalizing of sin, the not preaching of sin, that everybody's welcome in our church. Pretty soon these transgenders will be in the church. They'll be preaching out of the pulpit. And they don't even know what a penis is. And, and Christians will be, oh, you got to love them. And there are churches today, they take the sodomite and they'll marry them. When they don't acknowledge that the Bible, the King James Bible says they are an abomination. So when we bring them all into the church, we bring the sodomites, we bring the, all the sinners. What you're trying to do is you're trying to make everything better. You're trying to get in unity. You're trying to bring a healthy, great world. You're a post millennialist. And you are falsely teaching what the Bible teaches. You are falsely putting Jesus where he doesn't belong. It's remarkable. Because if he did end sin for everything, That means approximately 33 A.D. Hell shut her doors. They were locked. And everybody from that point went to heaven. You, you recognize that teaching? Everybody will go to heaven. I don't know how many times I've heard that in street ministry. Everybody, you know, everybody's going to go. Oh, well, there's no hell. 
That's when you get these six topics all messed up. There are people who teach God's all finished with the Jews. So they'll take Daniel 9.24 and say it's the church. That's replacement theology. That means we the church are better than Israel now. God is done with Israel. God is finished with Israel. You better be careful because that's a curse. And God said, I will curse them that curse you. That was said to Abraham. That was either said to Isaac or Jacob. I forget which one. But still, that went to the 12 tribes. When you got somebody who messes with, and that's what we're going to do tonight, 924. Wow, got far. I'm not going far. When you mess with 924 in the book of Daniel, you have replaced, you have messed, you have put out a context about Jesus. Sit in your church. Listen to the message. Is everything getting worse? That your only hope is Jesus? That the rapture will come? That there is a period of seven years of tribulation, three and a half years of tribulation, three and a half years of great tribulation, and Jesus Christ is coming? After everything just breaks down? Gasoline's going to go high. Food is going to be replaced and emptied. And a mark will come. Or are you in a church where we got to change politics? And around November, he gets up in that pulpit and he, he can't tell you who to, who to vote for because he's got to... <coughs> he got the 401c. But man, he will point. He will around about in every different way. They'll even pass out non-gospel tracts. This is what this candidate believes. This is what this party believes. What about the blood of Jesus Christ? Well, that comes later. After we fix everything up, after we, after we put roses in the Rose Garden of Washington, D.C., and we got our Messiah, Donald Trump, that's who it is now, and we kicked all the world's butt, and Korea will obey, China will behave, Russia won't attack no more, We'll end socialism, though that's the government of the Antichrist. We'll end communism, though that's the, the government of the Antichrist. And when we do all that, and all the whales are saved, and the tuna fish are not getting stuck in a six-pack of soda or beer, your gasoline prices will be where you want them to be. And your families will be like the television families. And by the end of the episode, everybody's happy. And all the problems have been solved in 25 or 52 minutes. You're just great people. You name it and claim it. I can do all things through Christ. Taking a verse out of context. Like 924 Daniel. And you got a mess. You got a mess. Jesus Christ did not fulfill nine twenty four of Daniel at the first resurrect at the first advent. Some things, okay, yes. But there's a greater and better coming through Jesus the second coming. And we're going to move on. We may get one verse done next week, next tomorrow, or Thursday, Lord willing. We're going to slow down in Daniel. We're going to... We're, we're going to come to a hill. We're going to get out of the car. We're going to turn off the car. We're going to push that car up the hill. It's going to be very slow. 
Then once we get over the hump of Daniel, then we'll go downhill. Number one. When you read a passage of scripture in any of the 66 books, who is God speaking to? He's either speaking to the Jew, to the Gentile, to the church, to the Jew and Gentile, or the world. And if you put, oh, the, this is written to the church, this is about me, and it's about the world, though the church is in the world today, or it's about the Jewish people, like, let, let, let me guess, the book of Hebrews? That's a great clue to figure out, who, who, who is Hebrews written to? Duh! How about the book of James? To the twelve tribes scattered. Twelve. <laughs> well, Esau was the dukes. Ishmael was princes, I believe. Twelve tribes is Israel. And when you got scripture, doctrinally, what does that script? What does Daniel nine twenty four say? What God wanted to say. And who is he speaking to? Daniel 9.24. All right, spiritual application. How can I spiritualize and tell you I'm spiritualizing? Yes, 9.24 can, can be spiritualized to Calvary, but it's not doctrinally Calvary. And then historic. There's a day, B.C., that Daniel sat down with a pen and penned what we just read. The problem with churches, the problem with Christians, I can do all things through Christ with, with strength. You take a verse out of the Bible and you take it out of context. You're not spiritually applying it. I can take all, I can do all things through Christ which strengthen. I can spiritually apply that verse without doing any harm. When I get up to say, I am going to take this verse, we're going to spiritualize it for the Christian. But doctrinally, you've got to have the rest of the chapter. Because when you come up to me and say, Stiley, I can do all things through Christ which strengthen me. Come with me to New York. Now, we can't fly. I just found out from the doctor today. I can't fly. We'll have to take a train or a bus. We're going to go all the way up on top of the, the Empire State Building. And when we get up to the top of the Empire State Building, we're going to go in the observation deck. And we're going to cut the railing all the way. And what you're going to do is you're going to do the best glorious swan dive you ever did off the Empire State Building and you're going to survive when you hit the street because you can do all things through Christ. Yes, you messed with the scriptures. Well, there'll be earthquakes, and there'll be rumors of wars, and yes, okay. But that's tribulation. You read about the earthquakes and the wars in the book of Revelation? That's what Matthew's talking about. What about us today? All right, so I take rumors of wars and, and, and wars. From the time all the way back to Genesis, I think 13, I think 13, there's been world war. There's been wars. There have been battles. My grandparents would listen to a radio and it would be World War II. My great-great-grandparents would listen to a radio, World War I. My dad and my uncle, would, my uncle went off to the army. My dad and uncle would be listening to a radio, I forget, Vietnam or Korea, which one. 
I used to build nuclear submarines for General Dynamics. I was actually in this. I was actually working in the submarine, and the news came along. We the first missile was launched in Afghanistan, and they had the picture of hitting that building. Remember that? That missile came from a. a, a um, a fast attack submarine made at Groton, Connecticut. We were all cheering. Our children today are sitting down and listening to Russia attack the Ukraine. There was a time before they never had radio. They would hear Alexander the Great is conquering the world. You say, well, what are you going to do with that Matthew 24 for us? What are you going to, are you going to, you're going to spiritualize it? Everybody's been having rumors of wars. That the Jehovah Witness said, Jesus is coming, World War I. Jesus never came. Jesus is coming, World War II. Ne Jesus never came. Build this house for Jesus and the apostles. They never came. So the rulers moved in. Now they're in a cult. They're in heresy. Why? Because they twisted the scriptures. The Catholic Church twists the scriptures. They don't even go with the scriptures. The Baptist Church twists the scriptures so they can have Resurrection Sunday on Easter. When the Passover was many days before or after. You see what you got to do is you got to take the Passover... Okay? You've got to count three days and three nights. That's the resurrection. Sometimes it's on Monday. Sometimes it's on Tuesday. Sometimes it's on Wednesday. Sometimes, I mean, you're not going to have people come out on Thursday. Resurrection. You got The two times everybody comes out to church. Christmas and Easter. Well, that's the time everybody's coming out to church. Duh, what would you think? That's the broad is the way that leads to destruction. <laughs> I mean, that's where you can count so many heads and you put it in your little book. I told my daughter the other day, I'm going to get me one of those styrofoam heads and put a hat on so they can count that head. Maybe get one for both sides. 